what you believe about yourself and life creates your reality. Pleasure is our birthright. This body will go back to Mother Earth and my consciousness will go back to the whole. I discuss things like life and love and how to live your best life and crypto and NFTs and metaverse and philosophy and economics once in a while and building better communities. All of my opinions, thoughts, and ideas are up for change and debate. And this is just the ideas that I have right now. How do you get to that point of self-love? It's a process trip. There's a lot of different exercises you can do and practice you can do, but a lot of it is just learning to accept yourself for where you are. Like just being like, I hate, I might hate this part of myself right now, but I'm gonna choose to just accept it. I'm gonna accept it. This is what I got. To say it out loud, you're like, I have thick thighs, or whatever it is, and I accept them. And it just starts there. And then from acceptance, I like to move into, uh, okay, I kind of like them, you know, they make me different. And then to love. Where I derive joy is by connecting with you guys and sharing all the things that I have learned in my life. And hopefully one person today can gain one ounce of energy or good vibe or potentially remember their power and their beauty that is inherent and is always accessible within you. If I can do that, then I've checked off all the things that I have to do today because I want to go out there and live my life and come back and teach you guys that you are powerful beyond measure. I am so proud of you. You are doing a great job. Okay, you need to give yourself more credit. Your life is in a lot more order than you realize, okay? You've got your shit together, even though it doesn't feel like it. Look how far you've come. Proud of you. I love you. And you're doing a really great job. So give yourself a little bit of credit today, and let's all collectively choose to have a great day today. When you are living your life, you have these pathways. So let's say you start from point zero, and something happens, and you can choose to go down anger, Guilt, shame, frustration, sadness, joy, bliss, ecstasy, whatever. There's these pathways that you can go in, in relation to how you're feeling and what you're experiencing. And the more often that you go down these pathways, the more often they get upgraded. Literally, more neurons, neural pathways get built around your path to get from here to there. Okay, so I attribute it to like a freeway, a five lane freeway. If you've been traveling between normal and fucking angry rage or hate or depression or frustration over and over and over and over, that's gonna be the natural place that your brain's like, oh, I'm lazy, I can go over here. <laughs> I'm just gonna be in shit <laughs> today because it's easy, because <laughs> it's super easy to find that. Versus if you're not used to experiencing a state of like love for yourself, love from the universe, love for the universe, then you're gonna be fucking bushwhacking, okay? You've got a machete. You're just bushwhacking your way through. You're like, where's, where's love? I can't find it. This is really hard, fuck. And then you're like, finally, you bushwhacked your way there and you're like, oh shit, love. Love is right there, that's amazing, cool. So then you walk back and you kind of trample down the, the branches and the whatever we, we feel. I don't know what kind of field you're in or what kind of forest you're in. But now you've got a bit of a pass. The next time you go to love, it's a little bit easier to get there, right? You're like, huh, okay, I don't gotta bushwhack, I just gotta push down the bushes. And then next time you come, you're like, you know what? I'm gonna lay down some dirt. I'm gonna find this better. And then the next time you come, now it's turned into a one lane road. Now you can ride your bike down it, or your mountain bike, or your, road, or your car. Now it's a two lane freeway, or a three lane freeway, or a five way freeway, or a, a vacuum fucking magnet, magnetic tube, uh, like zero friction um, maglev system. And so it's this idea that like every single time that you travel between like neutral state and one of these emotions, it's easier there. And so the same thing happens where when you have an emotional state like anger and you're like, don't travel there as much, the f oh, like the freeway starts getting overgrown and that starts breaking down and like the plants start taking over. And so while you still might experiencing those experience those things, you're not gonna experience them as easy. And when you do, hopefully you've reached a state 
where you recognize that you are not your emotions. You are experiencing your emotions and you can be an observer to them. You don't have to attach to them. You don't have to be like, I'm an angry man. No, no. You are experiencing anger in the current situation that you're feeling or jealousy or rage or frustration or any of these other things. After age of 25, I don't think anyone need other approval. It's different in high school. Yeah, school's tough, man. We got like, like I just wish that, we, I agree with this, Grizz. I wish I, I had a grade school counselor, counselor teaching me these things. Like, that's why I'm excited to have a child. Like, just to show them, like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you are like divine. You, you are a powerful creator. Like, you don't need others' validation. You can choose to validate yourself. It's just like the best. Pleasure is our birthright. And the fact that pleasure has been turned on its fucking ass in the past societies with religion and old propaganda and media that pushes down our natural human instinct and power, like our power, most powerful energy in our life is our sexual energy. That is the power that fuels everything that is created. And we need to stop shaming it, stop feeling guilty for it, and feel gratitude for it and learn how to work it and use it for our advantage to live the life that we are meant to live. And everything can be pleasurable. Sitting here right now talking and sharing myself with you and you guys sitting there and listening to me and holding space for me right now. Like I feel so much pleasure having this intimacy with you guys and this interaction together. Like this feels awesome, thank you. And not to demonize that. Don't demonize pleasure. And don't just put pleasure all around sex, sexuality. Like we've like perverted sex and like we need to open it up and love it. Feeling pleasure in life is a beautiful thing. We attach sensuality and pleasure to sex, okay? Laughing is a type of orgasm. Crying is a type of orgasm. Anything that's a release is a type of orgasm, okay? It, you can get turned on by everything. When you see someone, someone beautiful walking by that evokes an emotion in you, just sit in that, okay? That energy is literally the energy that creates all things. You don't have to act on it. You don't have to do anything about it, but just revel in the pleasure of like beauty and expression and art and experience. Like, oh, it's the best. If we are feeling guilt and shame, guilt and shame does not create solutions. Guilt and shame does not create action. It creates paralysis. And what that does is it causes you not to act. It causes you to feel really small. It causes you to look outside of yourself for guidance and then all you're struck with is the media and politicians telling you what you should be doing and how you should feel. And that's just not it. You gotta come in here. Come in here. The water's warm in your heart. I'm telling you. Stop feeling shame and guilt about what's happened. Don't take on the shame and guilt of our ancestors or the people that came before us. We are not them. Okay? They made the choices that they thought were good the best choices that they could make was what they had and what they knew then. But now we know better. Okay, start there. Hi, start there. What needs to happen is humanity needs to realize the interconnectedness and the unity of us with each other, with ourselves, and with this planet. We need to heal the systemic root that is causing this dysfunction in the first place. Okay, if you recognize that you are Mother Earth and you are this plant and you are me and I am you and you are still in a place where you are self-destructive, you are limiting your growth and your transformation, you are hurting your physical body, you are closing yourself off to opportunities, if you are still causing yourself pain out of guilt, shame, control, programming, then if you see me as you, then you might do that to me or you might do that to the planet or you might not treat the planet because you're not showing up and treating yourself well. So when you learn to love yourself and to treat yourself well with grace, with compassion, with patience and the power that you have with that, then you can begin to extend that love from yourself into 
taking care of the plants, into taking care of the animals, into taking care of each other. And so what you need to do if you don't mind me out is learn how to love yourself because how the fuck are we going to love Mother Earth, who is us, if we don't love ourselves and our beingness? But this idea that it gets spread, okay, that a solar flare is going to come and wipe out technology or the end of the world is going to happen, economy is going to collapse, community is going to collapse, the family structure is going to collapse, all this collapse, the, the pandemic is going to take over, the da 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 right? This, these, doomsday is the same idea that you're going to go to hell if you don't learn about and praise Jesus Christ. It is the same shit. If you don't do this, then you are going, this is going to happen. And this is a means of control. So pay attention when you start to have this narrative around doomsday. Doomsday creates fear, which creates following and control. So if you want to be a follower and be controlled by doomsday narratives, you have that choice. You can live in that reality. But... You can also say, honey, I've managed everything in my life up till now with style, with grace. I've been protected. I've been loved. And anything that comes into my field, when it comes into my field, I manage. And I'm capable of managing. And I'm actually very proud of how I manage it. it brings community together. It's awesome. So I know I'm going to be okay when those things come. And spending any time in my life worrying about the potential of that over there... <laughs> Nah, I'm losing the pleasure of the moment then, yeesh. Do I think everything is fine? I think everything right now for me in this moment right now is fine for me. And I know in my life that I have an opportunity to use platforms like Twitch to remind people of love and kindness and our interconnection. And when I walk outside and I smile at every stranger I make eye contact with and compliment people when it feels genuine and comes from my heart and live my life through actions of love and light, that things go well. I am only one person and I can affect the community and the space that I'm in. And I am diligent with that. So, I do think everything is fine. I actually think everything is better than fine. And I actually believe in the power of people and the power of love and the power of our innate sense to desire to be helpful and to connect um, and to be included. So yeah, I just believe in people. So I know that we're, gonna, we're humans, we're fucking smart. We can overcome anything and we can come together to do anything. And this divide that you feel right now is programming. And it doesn't exist. I'm not mocking religious people. I think it's great to have something that keeps you um, in a state of feeling like you understand. Because it's like the moment that you realize that like nothing is really grounded in this reality is terrifying. Humans are hyper, hyper intelligent. And we pull our ideas from a unified field. Like we literally, put, all the ideas that come to us are from a greater consciousness than us, okay? And that greater consciousness only knows love and only knows healing, only knows connection. Like what it's trying to create is an even more connected self. And so no, I think that we have solutions to create answers for the problems. I'm a huge, huge fan of open sourcing. I think that things should only need to be invented once. If you have a good idea and it's going to be beneficial to society, that should be something that we share. We need to stop making everything so fucking competitive <laughs> and trade secrets. If you have a good idea and it's going to impact society, we take what we knew from our ancestors, we take what we knew from ancestral knowledge and the wisdom, we add it with our technology and what we know now, and we continue to evolve these products. This is like a lifelong thing. You have to peel back the layers of the onion, guys. You have to peel back the flower petals of the lotus, okay? Because we take on so much stuff that is not ours to take on, okay? 
When you're born, you take on your parents' fears, you take on your parents' desires, you take on your parents' energy. When you go to school, you take on the other kids. When you watch media, you take on the media or the teachers or whatever it is. And so you might be doing something that is not in alignment with who you really are. And so like we just need to have this process of peeling back that layer to figure out who, what is your real personality? What is your soul desire? What do you want? What do you want? Like, what is it? What is that? What makes you feel like this? Like, ah, yes. What does that make you feel like? What do I think about the simulation theory? Well, I agree with people when they say that it's like disproved by the law of thermodynamics, but I also think that our current physics systems don't fully understand quantum realms and other dimensions. And I totally feel like there are ways for us to pull energy out of other dimensions that would defy the laws that we have operating on this third density. So I love the simulation theory because I, I, like, to, I like to believe in things that benefit my experience of life and those around me. Does that make sense? So by me believing in the simulation theory, that essentially kind of follows this like, oh, I chose to incarnate and I got this body and I'm in this life, then uh, I gotta just go through and live and do my best and at the end, nothing's gonna matter because I'm gonna be dead, you know? And the simulation's gonna be over and I'm gonna go back to whatever I was before. So like, I like it. I like it because, and I like it because we're all gamers here. I love playing World of Warcraft. And if I think of my fucking character as one of my World of Warcraft characters, like in WoW, I'm fucking brave. I'm applying to all the top guilds, okay? I'm not worried about them declining me. I'm apply I know I can get it. I work, work my ass off for my character. I top the damage leaderboards. Like that's who I am in WoW. So like, why can't I be that person in my regular life? And I think the simulation theory kind of lets you do that. I think the only time that the simulation falls into issue is this idea that every other person isn't like, you can believe they're not real and you're just experiencing it as yourself, or you can believe that they are all real, but none of this matters. And so it's like, I never want to slip into this like harming others thing. I believe that we should always act in kindness and love and don't harm anyone unless it's consensual. I smiled at an elderly lady on my walk today and she scoffed at me. So this is what you do. You do it over and 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 over. Okay. Do you know how many times people don't smile back at me and I still smile at them? Because you know what? I love when people smile back on me, but you know what I love more? I love more when people don't smile back at me because I know that they're walking away thinking, why didn't I just smile back at them? Why didn't I just smile back at them? I could have just smiled back at them. Why didn't I smile back at them? And then they get reflected by me and they got to think about that shit. They got to walk away and they got to think about it. Am I so hardened? Am I having such a bad day that a stranger smiling at me is going to make it that I can't smile back to them? Who have I become? I need to change my whole life and become the best version of myself now because of this one stranger that smiled on the street. Self-confidence and self-love is where you have fully accepted that this is the body that I was born with. This is the set of traits that I have. This is the gifts I have. These are the challenges I have. And I'm gonna accept it all. And I'm gonna move through life with the power of this and with the love of this. I'm gonna check off all my boxes. And then when I'm checked up and I'm healthy, I can give endlessly to people. And I have opportunities to give endlessly to people. And it doesn't burn me out because when I am in alignment, I am giving from an infinite source and infinite energy remains after I'm done giving. Like, it's just crazy. So masculine energy is like, get out there, do the thing, chase the thing, hunt for the prey, bring back the prey, okay? Now the feminine energy receives the prey and takes it apart and makes it into things and da 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 da, da and concocts all the things in order for like the community to benefit. Women, okay, we align with people that are good genetic matches for us to create children with. How fucking crazy is that? And we align with people where we can exercise and learn about ourselves through the other person. So I'm likely to attract someone that's gonna bring out the issues that I have that I need to look at, that I need to work on. 
You need to be laser focused. See, that's a belief. And what you believe about yourself in life creates your reality. So if you think that you need to be laser focused, then you're going to have to be laser focused to find success, my friends. If you believe that you can only get paid if you work hard, then you're only going to get paid to work hard. If you believe that you like work can't be fun, then work's never going to be fun. Because your ego, this incredible ego that we have, goes out of its way to be right. So if you change the programming that you put into the ego, then your ego is going to go out there and look for all the ways that it's going to be right. Do, 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 do. Oh, I'm about to let you in on the best technique for my life. And it is called... I'm going to make up this name right now. It doesn't actually have a name. Imaginal therapy. <laughs> You are the creators of your life, and right now, in this moment, your past is dictating the way that you are expressing, thinking, and living, okay? But what if I could tell you that you can change your past? Hmm? What if I could tell, could tell you that you can literally rewrite everything that's ever happened to you in the quiet of your own mind, in your own home, in this moment, right now? So you think of a moment. We'll use my example of being burned at the stake. I had this vivid vision of being burned at the stake and all the people were screaming at me in French and I was like so confused. I looked up like Salem witch trials and I was like okay now those were in America like what and like women witches weren't even burned in the Salem witch trials so I was like that's crazy so then I looked into it I was like where were women burned and during the Spanish Inquisition in France and all over fucking Europe, they ran around and they would just burn women who were considered intelligent or skilled or knew anything about anything. No, this was a sober vision that I had when I was in meditation and I was doing um, sounding. So it's kind of like where you hum uh, when I was meditating. And I like accessed this and I was like, what the fucking shit? And that relates so deeply to my fear I have a deep fear, and as a woman, and if there's any women in my chat right now that can relate to this, and maybe men too, I have this deep fear that if I stand out too much, if I show how much wisdom I have or how quickly I can learn things or grasp different things or like if I'm too powerful, that I will be killed. Literally, literally this is used to be how I would operate and how I would live. So I would live in this subdued state letting just enough out to relate to people and have people like me but nothing more than that because i don't want to poke my head up and be killed that was the feeling that i had let's look at that okay wow this is really not serving me this memory that i have of this trauma because it's preventing me from now that i'm in a safe society where women can be powerful preventing me from fully expressing myself okay so this isn't, I don't want this anymore. Pa, this is a stupid memory. So then you go and you imagine you're in that same memory. So I'm meditating, I've done some breathing and I'm sitting there quietly. And you can do this before falling asleep. That is the best time. Ooh, chef's kiss. You wanna make some big changes in your life? When you are falling asleep, visualize the things that you want to happen. Maybe not start with like abuse memories, maybe start with like little things and like bullying or whatever it is and bring it up. I'll just share two examples. So one example could be this like steak burning. So instead, I remember I re-remembered this memory that I've had as, oh, that shouting in French, they're shouting because we're celebrating because the idea that I have has saved the town. And that fire is actually a fire that's cooking the feast or the roast that we're all going to share and enjoy in celebration because of us figuring out this thing. So like the smell of the fire, the feeling of the warmth of my skin, the uh, camaraderie and the closeness and the intimacy of my community and the celebration of the idea that I had that have changed something. Okay? So just humor me. So this, literally, just switching this, has changed so much fucking shit in my life. Like, now I just feel like I can just bravely and boldly be myself and, like, share all of my ideas and I can be strong and I can be powerful and, like, not so worried about it. Another one is I had this really big hurt when I was in grade 7 or 8, when, grade 8, when the boy I liked and all my friends 
intentionally didn't invite me to go to the beach. This is going to sound so stupid. But they intentionally didn't invite me to go to the beach. And then while they were at the beach, they kept calling my house phone. And they're like, oh, we didn't invite you. We didn't invite you. We don't want you here. All this stuff. Okay. And that like, at the t I had like, when that happened that day, I had like a total fucking panic attack. Like I went like full on 13 year old mental, crazy, bananas, cuckoo. That has led me to live in this life of feeling like an outsider or feeling like others don't want me to be a part of things or feeling like I'm on my own and I'm not a part of, like people don't want me to be there. So when I'm in places, I would find, I'm gonna get a little emotional cause it was like, it really affected me for a long time, but like, I'm like, oh, nobody wants me here. Like, I have to prove why I should be here. I have to prove, like, oh, look, I can do this. Look, I can make you happy. Look, I can fit this. Look, I can be the entertainer. Look, I can do the food, whatever it is. It's like, I had to, like, show people that why I should be there. And then I've always felt like nobody wanted me there. So, <laughs> since I'm a divine creatrix and I can fucking change my entire reality, I was like, okay. So I went into my meditative state and I was like, and I just sat there and I reimagined it. And I reimagined it as, cause every single person that was involved in that has apologized to me for it. What's done is done. I've had that engagement with them. They're like, Kristen, like that was so mature. I'm sorry. Like we've healed from that. But my fucking trauma, my body is still like, eh. so I sit there. And I, read my mem I went through the memory and I re-visualized it as, okay, what if when they called me, they were inviting me because they had set up something special and they wanted me, wanted to celebrate something and they had prepared something and I joined them at the beach. And then I arrive at the beach and they're like, Kristen, we are so grateful and so happy that you are here. You are always included and we always want you to be a part of what we're doing and what we're part of. Like you bring so much value and joy and fun to these experiences. Of course we wanted you to be part of it. Actually, we made it even more special than you could ever imagine. And now if that ever comes up in me, I remember that as the new memory. So I'm overwriting this neural connection in my brain with the new memory. And since then, I have gotten, I kid you not, because I was kind of like in Miami, I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna make friends. Meh. Uh, like, I'm so isolated here. I've had three friends come out of the woodwork being like, hey, Kristen, I know this girl in Miami. I think you guys would get along. I'm gonna introduce you guys. Hey, Kristen, you should come out. I just moved here. You should come out. You should come do this. And it's like opened whatever that block was that I had around not being part of something it is totally open that and all of a sudden i'm getting chills right now like people are coming to me and inviting me to be part of the group whether it's in like business deals friendship anything i am invited and i am part of and i will always be valued and be part like things and i'm also okay when i'm not because i can recognize that not everything is meant for me but if you're able to go through and create a new neural network that bypasses, you know, or changes, I'm not sure how this actually looks for neuroplasticity, um, new neural connections around that, you can literally like heal your own trauma. And so I think this is what a lot of what psychedelics can do for people who are healing from PTSD and things like that, is you're able to see the trauma from a state that's untraumatized. And you're able to see the memory and see the feeling from a place of not attaching in the same way as you did in the moment of that happening. And what, either seeing it from other people's perspectives, seeing it from the divine love, seeing it from all these different levels. And so then you have this way of seeing the truth, right? Because when we are experiencing that experience, whether we're too young to understand it, and it's something that happens when we are a child, whether we're too naive or too hyped up or too whatever to understand it fully. Like we're never experiencing our truth. We're only experiencing our perspective of reality. So I think that psychedelics can help go through these experiences and just give you a new view of being like, oh shit, well maybe, maybe, or what if, or it could have been a different way 
um, or I could understand the other people's point of views or I could understand better the pain, the suffering, whatever it is. Um, so yeah, it's just pretty fucking powerful and I wish more people knew about this because we just so many people live as like a victim to their past and then a victim to their mind and a victim to their life when in reality like you are a divine creator you are magic you can change and create anything and it'll affect you so much i had one experience where i was literally a video game character like i would come back to the kitchen and like the kitchen was like the main menu and it had like a main menu and i would pick like new quest, new adventure. And then I would like go to a new room and I don't know, it was so fun. So it definitely like psychedelics will really make you feel, especially as gamers, like if we're all, we're all gamers here for the most part, you will feel like a video game character. Like one, you can dress up, you can be fabulous, you can be creative, da, 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 da. you can like dress up at the part, but you really get this sense of like, holy fucking shit, I am not, <laughs> I am not Kristen, I am not, this body, I am not this mind. I am something deeper that's in her, that chose to be her, to have this fucking crazy fractal experience that I'm having and interacting with you guys and like living this life. Like I'm not her and she's gonna die. Like Kristen's gonna die. This body, this mind, this set of qualities and skills and pizzazz and dance moves, she's gonna die. Like this body will go back to mother earth and my consciousness will go back to the whole. But like, I owe it to Kristen to be the fucking best controller of this life. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, like Kristen, I'm gonna give you the best fucking life I can. And I am in control of that and I choose that. And I'm so excited to take you along. Let's go. I believe that I love Western medicine, I love Eastern medicine, I love holistic medicine, I love spiritual medicine, I love Chinese medicine, I love Ayurveda, I love all of it. Everything contributes to this. And I do believe that all ailments can be derived from a greater root of energy in our life and in our field. I would love, I would love to join you in the morning and while well, you'd sip your coffee or hang out in your apartment and just send you love and remind you that you're a perfect, divine, beautiful creator. And the quicker that you can see yourself as I see you, the quicker this entire planet can heal and start caring for itself, so. Mm -hmm.